They call them the cocaine cowboys. They call them the cocaine cowboys. You're not selling it, you're not using it, you're just an importer. The Colombians threw a, a number at us that was more than agreeable. $3,000 a piece, or a kilo in your terms, and they wanted to move at least 400. We went down there on the first trip, we got paid $1.2 million. That was enough to, to excite us, to say, maybe we'll stay in this trade for a while. The people that I became a necessity to find a Colombian that could supply the large amounts that were needed at the time. And he said, well, I'm going to hook you up. I can take you to uh, these Colombians that I know, and this guy can give you whatever you want. I can sell 100 kilos a week easily. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Yeah, you know. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Yeah, you know. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Yeah, you know. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Bitch, I got bricks. Yeah, you know. I have a friend, and he's a pilot, and he works for these Colombians. So the guy introduces himself, his name is Mickey Monday, and he's like a redneck from Florida that's been here his whole life. I want to say I, I didn't like him. The first time I meet Johnny, he's driving this black Mercedes two-door that's got drug dealer written all over it. Mickey Monday had a very successful transportation for these people from Medellin. Flamboyant. Um, he just looked like somebody that I don't want to have anything to do with. I mean, he's, remember the show MacGyver? That's, that's this guy. He could do stuff that just was incredible. And we were contracted, actually, by the Colombians. I would make arrangements with them, and they would tell me, okay, there's a thousand kilos, come pick it up. Over the mountains, down, and fly through a valley so nobody would see you. And you never had a problem landing, you never had a problem taking off. It was all paid down there, the government worked with them. And we would send the plane down there, the plane would land, they would spend the night. I mean, you'd land there and they'd say, oh, you want to stay? Oh, you want a woman? You want my little sister? You know, yeah, right. Want something to drink? I'm going, yeah, I really want to drink and get back in this plane and fly for another 12 hours drunk, right? Uh, the woman didn't sound bad. The next day, they would be loaded. There's two ways to come back from down the plane. We would make it look like we were going into one of the local airports. And what we'd do is just make a flyby. And head west, we bought some property in Lakeland. We built two runways there, put up a couple barns that were really hangers, they looked like barns. And when you'd open up the hayloft door, you would see that it was shaped to the tail of an airplane going. I would use a five, six, eight-year-old family car. And we would load 300 pieces and we would put air shocks on a car so that the car wouldn't fall to the ground. And we would use a tow truck to tow the vehicle back. We had a towing company that we formed and we bought a gas station, a garage down here in Miami. And the guy in the tow truck would have a work order. We had a driver who obviously knew what was going on but was told. You get pulled over and they open the trunk of the car. You know, you don't know. If you're driving the vehicle, it's kind of hard not to know what's in the trunk. Well, the guy in the tow truck don't know. You don't know. You're contracted to tow the car, man. Yeah hooked up and away he went. And let him take the car and let him take you down there, but they can't hold you. You got the bill here and everything. And we would get a caravan with two, three cars going. We would use one car in front as a spotter and one car behind. They would bring him into Miami. And we did that for six, seven years. Never had one little problem at all. And then started to do airdrops. I built me a small boat factory to play with. And we decided to do Columbia up to the Bahamas, uh, airdrop it to boats. And they had beacons that they would drop, and they would be able to know exactly where the load was because there would be a frequency that would send back to where it was. The middle console would open up. They put holes in the middle of the boat, and you would fill them up. And then bring it in with boats. The big problem at first was the packaging of the product, which was a fiasco because the Colombians being such wonderful people in organization, screwed it up for two trips. It would get seepage. There would be salt water that would get into it, and it really kills coke. Salt water is really an enemy of coke. Mickey was determined that he could stop the leakage and told him how to wrap it. I sent tape recorder, I sent pictures of it, step by step as to how to do this. You have to understand, you're not going to tell a Colombian how to do anything. So Mickey could talk from today till tomorrow, and the Colombians aren't going to do what he tells them to do anyway. Well, my guys go down, pick up the stuff, they come back on the trip, and it's not packaged. It's just like it always is. They threw it out the door, and more than half of it busted up, and they lost millions of dollars. 
because they didn't package it right. So by their stupidity, it would get water damaged. And they were all bent out of shape at me, but they couldn't blame me. That's their problem. Hey, it's your problem. It wasn't until the third trip that it worked. And then it worked and worked and worked. Bitch, I got bricks. 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 And the next day, my tow truck would show up with a work order and a trailer. My shop was only like four blocks away. The boat would go in there, and then we would go in the back, open up the compartment, and load the stuff into the cars. All the merchandise would be handed to me. I had different stash houses in Miami. I used normal people, working people, that wanted extra money. I remember kilos going for forty, fifty thousand dollars in the street back then. And they would pay us for transportation of the kilos. Back then, I think that we were getting $3,500 a kilo. And what I would do to make sure we got our money was we would only deliver half. They would put the money in the trunk, and then they would return the car. I would then give them the rest of the product. Because at that time, a million dollars to me was a lot of money. It was the first million you ever make, so it's a lot of money. But after that, it was like... Yeah. We'd purchased a Cessna Conquest we paid $980,000 for <laughs> in cash. How do you like that? You try that? So much money that smugglers literally have no place to put it all. You don't understand, I had garbage bags in my lawn. With, you know, each bag had like a million seven hundred thousand dollars buried in the lawn because I had nowhere to put it. We used to bury it in the horse feed too. I remember I'd be digging for horse feed. I'd find money in the horse feed. Everybody had a price. Everybody does have a price. There are very few people that don't. You could start as high as Noriega in Panama and you could go all the way down to the city managers, to the police departments. If somebody got pulled over and they had 50 kilos in the trunk, offer a bribe. You know, maybe you couldn't bribe a cop with $20 or $50 or $100, but there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Tell them within an hour you'll have whatever it is that they want there in cash. Half a million dollars, three quarters of a million dollars. But you got to leave with the coat. And most of the time it worked. I happened to know this lieutenant that worked in North Bay Village. I approached him one day and I said, listen, I want to unload some boats behind the North Bay Village Police Department. You think we've got any problem doing that? Where he said, I'll tell you what, we'll have two patrols cars and we'll throw it in the back of the patrol cars and drive it wherever you want. We had how much did I spend? And there was so much money that once it broke through, it couldn't be eradicated. Probably as much as I put in the bank, fifty million dollars. Easily. Easily. Go out with a bang for the get coat. Walk with your five when you got that work. Niggas lurking to hit you with that hurt. These niggas green.